Full Frontal, we have a long tradition going all the way back to our first season where I sit down and interview the President of the United States before he or she leaves office. This week, it was President Obama's turn. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for our annual Halloween presidential interview. It is so exciting. This year, I'm going as a witch. That's not a witch costume. I'm a woman on television, and I'm over 40, so I'm already in costume. Where's yours? I'm dressed up as what happens when young people vote. Someone gets really old really fast. That's not it. So is that like white spray paint or fun Halloween cobwebs up there? Sam, I'm still president for about three months. <laughs> Careful. Look, Sam, the reason I'm here is not just to celebrate Halloween with you, mm -hmm. but it is actually because I want to let first-time voters know why it is so important to vote. This is probably the most important election of our lifetimes. The choices could not be clearer. Mm -hmm. And if we want to build on progress on issues like climate change and gender equality and making sure that everybody has health care and making sure that young people have a good education and can afford college, they've got to make sure that their voices are heard. So you are a father of a college student I sitting am. down with a 47-year-old mother of three. Um, if this was your best idea to get young people to vote, what was your worst idea? <laughs> Have you thought about going on Antiques Roadshow? I haven't, but it turns out that young people actually are more interested and engaged than I think we give them credit for. Sometimes they get cynical. Mm -hmm. Hard to understand why after watching what? this campaign. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, Malia, my oldest, she actually voted for the first time. The, the pride that she took, I think, in casting her ballot is a pride that I think a lot of young people feel, but you got to talk to them about the things that they care about. Talk to me as though I'm a millennial voter and get me interested in voting. Okay, because it's like, I don't even know if there is like any point in voting. Like, they're both so totally flawed. Like, don't you even think it's time to like upend the whole system and just like break everything? First of all, if you're worried about whether you can afford to go to college or not, then Hillary Clinton's got a very specific plan and Donald Trump doesn't. If you care about climate change, that's not a small thing. So young people have a bigger stake in this election than anybody. I would hope that you'd be willing to take about the same amount of time that you spend just looking through cat videos on your phone <laughs> to make sure that the democracy is working. Sorry, I was just Snapchatting myself as a bottlenose dolphin. <laughs> well, if and when Hillary is president, what do you think will be the female equivalent of you weren't born in this country? That's an interesting question. Thank you. I have a lot of this. <laughs> I, I think the equivalent will be she's tired, she's moody, she's being emotional. There's just something about her. There's something about her. When men are ambitious, it's just taken for granted. Well, of course they should be ambitious. When women are ambitious, why? That theme, I think, will continue uh, throughout her presidency, and it's contributed to this notion that somehow she uh, is hiding something. What a nasty woman. <laughs> After you leave office, have you thought of just whispering in Donald Trump's ear, you were right, I wasn't born here, <laughs> just to like mess with him? I, I think it's fair to say that uh, I will be organizing my post-presidency where I'm not close enough to him to whisper in his ear. That is very fair. What would you like your legacy to be, other than not having everything be overturned the day after inauguration? <laughs> I feel confident that we can build on the progress we've made around climate change, clean energy, health care, making the economy work better for everybody. All that feels good to me, but the thing that I care most about is making sure that there's a generation of young people who are following me and Michelle. If we can look back 20 years from now and say to ourselves, wow, there are a whole bunch of people who were inspired by what we did and are doing it even better, then we'll feel pretty good. Probably also first American president to be interviewed by Samantha Bee. I'll put you down for that. That'll be big. That's huge. That's going to have a, have a prominent place in our library. Seeing as how this is our Halloween interview, can yes. you tell us a spooky story about what happens if people don't vote? Donald Trump uh, could be president. That was very scary. Yeah. I'm going to make it even scarier for okay. you. Yeah. 
Supreme Court Justice Corey Lewandowski. <laughs> Speaker of the House, Louis Gomert. That was pretty scary. I'm not sure I'm going to sleep well tonight. Not before. Yeah. Can I lean in and give you a big fist bump? Absolutely. What? Oh, yeah. Pretty exciting. That was very exciting. <laughs> we'll be right back.